welcome everybody. My name is Trisha Tampkin. And I remain Jason Tebow. <laughs> from More Essentials. And we appreciate you guys joining us. Thanks so much for hosting, David. We appreciate it. And we're not going to spend any of our time giving you an introduction. No, you already saw that from David. Right. And we don't have a lot of time with you. So here's what we look like. That's our introduction. <laughs> what we're going to do today is kind of rapid fire show you some of the things that we're doing to optimize AI on our desk and with our coaching clients uh, and with a lot of our students that we're going through training and how you can put it on your desk as quickly as possible. Yeah, so if you guys have any questions as we're talking, we are not the kind of trainers that make you hold your questions. We'll give you time at the end, but come right into chat or the QA area and ask anything you want. We can manage it as we go. Yeah, we got four <laughs> eyes between the, the two of us. <laughs> there you go. So the big question that is on everybody's mind right now. And I like to call this the 10 year anniversary of this question. The first time I was asked this at a conference was 2014. And I'm going to give you the same answer that I gave then. No, AI won't replace recruiters. A recruiter using AI will, though. And I always liken it to accountants, right? Computers did not replace accountants. If back in 1980 and the QuickBooks was coming out and all that, you're like, you know what? I'm still good with my abacus. I got a calculator. I got some spreadsheets. I'm good. <laughs> well, probably you're not still in accounting. Somebody, a newer accountant came along that was completely computer uh, aware and relevant and grew up in it. And that just became the standard. AI will become the standard. We're seeing it everywhere. I imagine all of you are as well. And it's moving very, very quickly. Uh, I personally, 30 years in this industry, I have never seen a technology that hits so many aspects of our business simultaneously with this incredible amount of efficiency. So it's moving very, very quickly for us right now. Let's talk about what it is. I want you to imagine AI just like a parrot for a moment. And I'm almost giving it too much credit because parrots have real thinking brains, right? But it's, but it's not. It's, it's an artificial intelligence. But think of the parrot that has been alive for about a million years. It has overheard so many human conversations in so many different languages and can repeat back, not exact order, because that's not what parrots do, but it can repeat back as soon as it hears the subject. So you could ask it for the rules to soccer, and you would get back the rules of soccer. You could even ask it for soccer strategy. You could ask it for soccer history. You could ask it for the list of players on any soccer team. It's going to be able to give you all that information, but that parrot doesn't understand soccer, can't play soccer, and does not care at all about soccer. Despite having the same number of feet as the average soccer player, <laughs> the cognition of the game isn't really there. You kick a soccer ball at a parrot, it's going to fly away, right? And so that's just what the AI is. It can parrot the information. We need to not think of it as a, as a deep researcher, a little bit more in the case of Gemini, where it's you know meant for that, but more like a um, word soup. It, like Mad Libs. It's kind of like Mad Libs. It knows what to fill in for the next word. And that's how we have to think about it. And it's really challenging because if you've put hands on it at all, it can start feeling like a person. It can start feeling like an expert. And it's not an expert. It makes stuff up all the time. Okay. All right. So there's a couple of different ways that we can approach a new technology when it hits our industry, right? We liken this a lot to sourcing. So you could, in fact, buy every single tool out there that does data enrichment or gives you candidates, LinkedIn Recruiter, Zoom Info, Apollo, any of them. You can do that and buy them all and you never need to learn how to source. Or you can learn how to source and you don't need all of those tools, right? Like there are two extremes to that tool, to that spectrum. Um, and the best solution is likely something in the middle, right? So 
There are major large language models that exist right now. So when I say large language models, or when we say, because those were words out of Trisha's mouth, <laughs> we are referring to what most of us think of as the current AIs. But I also grew up with AI being this like all-powerful thing inside of science fiction, where it never made a mistake, could think like a human, but better and faster and always told the truth. And language models aren't that, right? Like language models are, as we said, Mad Libs. Our main ones, you've certainly by now heard of ChatGPT. Gemini is the one from Google. It was previously BART. They actually changed the models really on all of these over and over again. So the names are just the names. Claude is from Anthropic. Now those top three are the ones that we teach and train the most because they have three different main uses. Right. So as we start telling you about what these main uses are, do me a favor, come into chat and tell us, are you regularly using any of these large language models? And if you are, which one? So come into chat and just tell us, right? Chat GPT, Gemini, Claude, whatever you're using, we want to get a sense of it. Now, a moment ago, uh, before we started, David had been talking about, you know, identifying your, your strengths and your weaknesses and knowing that your strength is sometimes a weakness. Well, each of these also has strengths and weaknesses. And depending on what upsets you, this isn't just true with AI, this is true in life. What upsets you helps to reveal your strengths. Find yourself getting annoyed when somebody sends you, you know, poorly spelled and you know, terrible grammar emails. Your strength is probably accuracy. If you find yourself getting frustrated if people are moving too slowly, your strength is probably speed. Well, each of these will have a different strength as well. So with Claude, it really is mostly the rational thought. With Gemini, it's research. And with ChatGPT, it's long writing. It is. So Amber, I'm going to speak directly to you for a moment because you're speaking directly to me. Um, Amber said, mostly ChatGPT because I'm a creature of habit, I guess. Me too. So I started with GPT and I was only in it. Like when we first taught our uh, the first program on Gemini, Jason taught the whole thing because at that point I was just like Amber. I was still only in GPT and I had not moved into any other models. So looking at your answers coming through, the vast majority of you are GPT. We're seeing a little bit of Gemini. We're seeing a little bit of Claude. But a little bit of co-pilot, I saw a perplexity in there, but most of you are chat GPT focused. This is not a bad thing. Chat GPT was the first and is probably the most, it's got the most bells and whistles to it because it's been around the longest. Um, but there are absolutely times that other models are going to be a lot more effective for you right? Gemini is, is my primary research one. As much as chat GPT may write longer and I can make it write in my voice and I can have it do custom candidate presentations where I'm just feeding it a resume and it writes exactly what I want, exactly my way. Its research capability is weak and limited. If I wanted it to go and search the internet, there's a bunch of sites that it can't even look at, major sites, important research sites. It's got a training cutoff date, which means that it might not know anything that happened before April of this year. Uh, it's only going to know that stuff, but anything that happened last month beyond its recognition, right? Gemini, on the other hand, live connected to the internet, a tool from you know Google itself, the search giant, and secretly all along, the AI giant. Google is the one that even first proposed large language models, and Google has AIs that we've all been using, whether it's Google Translate or Google Maps, uh, for years, or bigger AIs that they only use for research purposes. So combining all of that AI with all of Google's known ability in the search world, we can get a really powerful research engine out of Gemini. Now, Claude goes the opposite direction. It says no connection to the internet. We want this to be ethical. We don't want any information to go on here. I'll tell you, you know, I was still just in chat GPT. Jason was already deep into Gemini and Claude before I ever put hands on it. So he had posed a question to all three of the major models and all three, the same prompt, the same question. 
he brought me the results. And he's like, all right, so look at this. And I read the GPT result and it's pretty good. And I read the Gemini result and it's not quite as good as the GPT result. It's shorter. It's a little bit more concise. And then I get to the Claude result. I am not kidding, guys. My chin hit the table. Like there's- She gasped as she read it. It was was surprising. She thought for a moment maybe that it had been written by a person because not only was there a little bit more personality to the writing, but there was clear, rational thought. It seemed like a smarter person wrote it. I thought Jason was messing with me. I thought he wrote the Claude one. So if you've not touched Claude, it is your best writer. It's your smartest model. It has the best reasoning capability. It just doesn't have access to the internet. It's trying also the hardest to only give you real information. Right. One of the things about all these, and you can just flip through to their next slide, because I will tell you, all of these things do lie to us because when it's word salad, we don't expect honesty, right? These are not fact generating machines. Even Google, which is a research one, has a function which lets you go in and check the things that it just told you to see that those are true. Why not just do that every time first? Right. Now, let's talk for a moment about the 10,000 AI tools that are out there and inundating your inbox. Okay. There's an AI for that. There's an AI for that. That's a website. There's an AI for that.com. There's like 14,000 AI apps. They're basically just wrappers around these large language models and This is not going to be a popular statement, but 90% of them are going to be out of business in 24 months. Don't waste your time. We are so early into this AI evolution. Let's see where the dust settles on the other tools. And I'd like you guys to focus mostly just on communicating with the large language models. Right. That gives you the ability to do everything that all 14,000 of those different AI tools are doing, just so long as you can ask the AI in whatever language you speak primarily, because they speak all of them. Right. I take that back. If you primarily speak Sanskrit, I don't even know how you got in this class, (laughs) but I think you might be beyond the capabilities of our language models. All right. So how am I actually going to use this, right? Like, it looks like many of you are using some of the large language models, but let's talk about how, okay? I want you to imagine right now that you have this full-time staff and it's a team of virtual assistants and content writers and marketing experts and recruiting experts and strategic consultants and researchers and sourcers, and it costs you 60 bucks a month for that whole staff, right? Now, the, you could go other routes on this. I know people that are paying for perplexity and they get uh, basically a limited token models of various AIs so they can use different ones. You don't have to go all in and spend this much. But at the same time, $60 a month is really slim because Trish, will you go back one slide for just a second? I want you to think about how much of recruiting is communicating. Most of it. Yes. Right. Staffing, you know, anything that we work on, what we're doing. And this is true of a lot of jobs. And there's people whose entire existence is made up of how to make your communication easier, better, do it for you. Like, what's the point of a ghostwriter? What's the point of, you know, a marketing expert? Well, all of these people tasks, these hours of work that you pay for. And when you pay for them, you're paying not just for their time, but for their expertise, for the years of schooling that they went through to get there, or, you know, 20 bucks a month, it's your choice. Right. So we pay for all three of these and that's it. We don't pay for any extra tools. Every single thing that we do, we do with these three. So if you're just getting started, if you're not one of the people that came into chat and said, here's what I'm using, like this, you've never touched an AI before and you are brand new. Pick one. I would tell you to go with either chat GPT or Gemini if you're going to upgrade, but make sure you have one upgraded account. I might lean chat GPT, but again, I'm like Amber, right? Like I'm, I'm stuck in my habits a little bit, 
But Gemini would be a good option for that as well. Well, and I'm poly artificial intelligence. So I am great if what you do is you spend a day and sign up for the free version of all three of the ones that we've focused on or all six of the ones from the earlier slide or mix and match and feel around to see which one feels like the one you want to spend money on, the one that feels most like this. Now, we like GPTs and gems. In fact, we've taken to call them gherkins. We have. So give us a yes in chat if you have ever built a GPT or a gem. And right. GPT is a custom built miniature AI built within one of these platforms. And the advantage of it is I no longer then have to give the instructions to the AI each time I wanted to do a task. If I take any of those things from virtual assistant, marketing expert, or about a hundred other things that I could name for you off the top of my head, I have cheat sheets. I have no really at the top of my head. <laughs> but if I want to take any of those tasks, I can have them all set up to where all I have to do is click and go. And I no longer am instructing the AIs because I instructed it once. It's like using English language to build artificial intelligence software. Right. So um, here's what we want to show you. We're going to keep it on this screen. And we've actually got one more screen like this for you. These are all of the GPTs that we have built inside of the, re and it's not even all of them. This is about uh, 80% <laughs> of the GPTs that we have built for the recruiting industry. Okay. So inside a GPT, what you basically do is put all of your instructions, you bake them inside of the GPT to make it so that it stays consistent. What it's going to do is it's going to, it's kind of like a Chrome extension. Like a Chrome extension is to Chrome what a GPT is to chat GPT. Or a gem to Gemini. Or a gem to Gemini. Those just came out about 10 days ago. So we build these so that we're able to basically optimize our efficiency. Now, I want to pause here for a minute because I want to actually just show you how one of these work. Okay, so I'm going to pull over here. Can we all agree that this is a awful job description? Right. I, this would appear to be an asbestos defense attorney. <laughs> the terrible job description. So what I'm going to do, I've copied this job description and I'm going to come into my GPTs and I am going to go and I'm going to take this job description and I'm going to turn it into a job posting. OK, so all I'm going to do, I'm inside of a GPT that we've built and all I'm going to do is paste the job description. Now, because the instructions are built into the GPT, it's following all of our best practices for what that job description should look like. When Jason, before we had this GPT, it used to take Jason and I 30, 40 minutes to take a terrible job description and turn it into an advertisement where somebody would actually respond to it, right? And so, it doesn't read like a mesothelioma, uh, you know, late night <laughs> litigation ad either. And it could have. No, it doesn't. So let me see if I can show you one more of these. OK, let's say that you are learning like these are all separate GPTs, right? So I thought I saw a question pop up earlier around uh, SEO. And yeah, I believe we got some of those. We in here do too. have some of those. So let me come in here and we'll put in this is uh, one that we built uh, because recruiters, we need to understand what our our candidates do. So, Jason, what should I search on? Um, let's do uh, CNC G code. Let's imagine that you are a recruiter, staffer, and they got uh, this requirement. And it said, I want my CNC machinist to know G code. And you're like, ah, I don't know what that is. Right. So here's one of the interesting things that these are built for. Like the instructions we gave it, first define it for me. Then give me a couple of analogies to understand it better. Now tell me about trends in this. Now give me the interview questions and what the answer should be for this. And then just in case you were doing client work, 
this would also be, uh, it'll give you questions to ask your clients. Now, now, you do have to pay for ChatGPT to build custom GPTs like this. However, you don't need to be using a paid account to use these. Now, I did see a question pop up briefly of over how we protect these. Now, first of all, you do get to set them when you build a GPT as internal use only, which you can do for any of the ones that you build custom for your business, you know, modify from ours, custom from your business. You just keep them locked internally. You can share them with the link. Now, we have times where we share GPTs, but remember, you always control the backend instructions. So you can effectively turn the GPT off by changing the instructions. So let's say you built one that you've given to a client or a potential client, and it's been like 30 days and they've been using it, but you know it wasn't meant for them to use forever. You're kind of trying to tease them into hiring you for other services. You just write new instructions into it that say, this GPT is no longer available, but contact Jason Tebow if you'd like to learn more. Right. And so you always control it because you control the backend data. Now, I'm going to just do this super fast. Uh, Joelle asked, how long does it take to build a GPT? Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come right into my account. I'm going to go to my GPTs. I'm going to click create a GPT. This is great because Kurt asked, I bet I can ask GPT to instruct me how to build these. If you just watch, we're going to build a super fast one right now. All right, so what I'm doing, I've named it. You're noticing it's coming over here. I'm not going to add the logo because we don't really need that right now. Translate any text to... Make it Mexican Spanish. To Mexican Spanish. And then I'm going to hit create. And it's going to ask me if I want to share this or share the link with anybody, right? Anyone with the link can use it. I'm going to save the GPT. It is built now. That's how long it takes to build a GPT, right? It takes longer for it to save it than it does to build it. So now I can come right in here and I'm just going to paste that job description again into this GPT and it will begin translating. Here we go. So here it is in Mexican Spanish. Now, anything that I want translated into Mexican Spanish, I can throw into this GPT and it'll do it. What it comes down to is how good are you at giving it instructions, okay? That's what's important, is learning how to actually prompt it. That was about as basic as I could go. <laughs> right, right. And you could understand that that was a one-word instruction inside of a, of a GPT where you might have a build, for example, you could do whatever your candidate presentations look like so that all you're doing is dropping in the resume and a few notes and it spits it out in your exact format every time. Well, if you can describe your exact format, that's basically what you're doing for instructions. If you can imagine taking a brand new employee, maybe somebody who speaks English as a second language and explaining to them exactly how that's supposed to be written. Now that is forever your GPT instructions. Right, so a couple good questions have come through, okay? Uh, Blake said, how do you protect your data? Custom GPTs would violate customer confidentiality agreements because they train open AI. They don't. They don't. So uh, we have this guy. His name is Frank Nye. He keeps all of his information public. He's a Java developer. We use him as our sample all the time. We have literally entered his information, full contact information, everything into chat GPT because he already had it public on the internet. So it was already there for training data. And... Um, it's not like I can go in and say, what's Frank Nye's phone number and email address? It's not going to give me that. So the other question was, how do you handle employees leaving? I can take that GPT I just made, start a new GPT, copy everything over, and now it's a brand new link and those employees won't have it anymore. The ones that have left won't have it. I can take the one that was for, there before and either fully delete the GPT or change the instructions to just say, Sorry, this GPT is out of date. Contact Jason Tebow if you'd like more information, right? Because we always control the back end instructions. It can't leave our control unless we are just sloppy and lazy with it. Now, if I put all my instructions in there and I give all of you the link and then I think about it like two years after I fired all these employees, yeah, it's probably a little too late for that. Right. 
All right. So the digital age, AI, not going to wait for you. We have been using this technology inside of our business, inside of our coaching practice since Thanksgiving of 2022. Now we had other <laughs> AI tools we used before that, but I'd say one of the most important things that we say it waits for nobody Every two weeks when we do one of our AI4 sessions and we have a news update about the world of AI and technique updates, there's never been a point where that news and changes to how we're basically doing our AI processes doesn't go 30 minutes or longer. Yeah, it's incredible. It, there's just constantly change and new stuff going on here. And I'm happy to say that we have had numerous times where these groundbreaking changes that are announced through like Forbes and New York Times, our students have been doing for weeks. They have because we're that on top of it. So we want to give you two things before we open up for more questions, right? Uh, we do free training every quarter. Uh, our next Rack Friday is... October 25th. Uh, if you want to attend, you just go to our website, Resources Rack Friday, and register. We'll give David the link. And anonymous attendee will also give uh, David the deck, and he'll pass it out to you guys. So join us for some free training that won't be AI related. It'll actually be business development related. And David, we did this for your group, okay? Anybody that wants to join our AI4 program, AI for Recruiters, uh, we're going to give them 40% off their first seat only for the next week. Okay, hey, I, I really want you to remember that that coupon code because at some point today or tomorrow, someone's going to call us because they can't remember it. You'll remember it. It's Haley. <laughs> That's your coupon code.